was walking the wayside Lost on a lonely road I was chasing the high life Trying to satisfy my soul All the lies I believed in Left me crying like the rain Then I lightened from heaven And I've never been the same Oh, I'm gonna climb a mountain I'm gonna shout about it I am a child of love I found the world of freedom I found a friend in Jesus Sing of the fire, but I saw you in the flame. Just when I thought it was over, you broke me out of the grave. Oh, I'm gonna climb a mountain, I'm gonna shout about it. I am a child. Heavenly Father, we just praise your name. We thank you that you call us your children, that you are our loving Father, Lord. We have come to this place to worship and praise your name, for you are worthy, you are glory. You are glorious, Lord. You are worthy of all of our praise. There's truly no one like you, Lord.
grace that makes no sense that we could never recompense who gives us all a second chance only you only you only you there is no one like our God form the universe only you only you only you Could ever be, we live for you. 
Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Praise God. Somebody come switch out the batteries on this pack and we'll be good. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the ushers if they will come. We're going to re prepare to receive God's tithe. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll get down low. Maybe you'll hear me a little more. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I am thankful that John has a soft touch. Amen. 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 Poke somebody and say, are you ready to give to God what he is commanding? See, it's a privilege to be able to give our offerings. And it's a blessing to be able to pay our tithe. Amen. Everything that we have is because God smiled upon us and provided for us the strength, the durability. If you have a job, be thankful for it. And if you don't like that job, look for another one, but be the best employee you can be while you were there. Let your light so shine for the gospel and the goodness of who God is. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll try it. Can you hear me now? Yep, yep. Fantastic. We'll leave that one close. So if you have your tithe, I've got it somewhere. Amen. Lift it up, if you will. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bless every heart here that has a heart to give. God, it's never been the amount of monetary gain. It's always been... Uh, the amount of the heart which with it has been given. So God, we ask blessings upon each one that has a heart to give unto you. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, if you will. Thank you. As they are passing amongst you, we have a couple of announcements that I need to inform you of. And then we're going to go straight into the word of God because his Word is life. Amen. Amen. This coming Saturday, that's this coming Saturday, next Saturday, we will be hosting as a church the uh, Christian Biker Unity event for Wisconsin. If the weather is great, we may have hundreds upon hundreds of individuals show up. And uh, if you ride a bike, I ask that you come. If you like bikes, I ask that you come. If you just love your pastor, please come. We want to, and uh, you can sit on my Harley and take pictures with it. It's all good. It, it, it's good. Amen? Amen? But it's a Christian unity event, and they ask that we have a $10 donation for each person that's here because they are purchasing uh, the pizza and the drinks and the food, and then the coffee house will be open to help bless the ministries here within our congregation, but it's going to be a time of fellowship, a time of prayer, a time of worship. Um, myself and a few other men here in the church will be providing worship that night, so uh, I'm excited for that. You may not, but I'm excited. Amen. And then next Sunday, the Sunday after is Father's Day. We will not be having a Father's Day picnic this year, but I encourage every man in this house to be here there's gifts that we have purchased for you there's others that are going to be donating cookies how many of you like cookies surely I'm not the only one I resemble that I really love cookies but the facts are somebody's going to be baking cookies for every man that shows up 
uh, and we're just going to have a great time. And if you're here and, and you've never filled out one of our welcome cards, I encourage you to do that. It's going to show up on the screen in front of you. That's what it looks like. It's in front of your pew. Uh, fill it out, turn it in, drop it into our joy box at the back. Again, always remember there's several ways that you can give outside of just the offering that we receive. So if you wasn't able to give today in a cash or a check, you can always go online, and there's many of you that are using those apps as well as PayPal, and we're thankful for that. This morning, I want to talk to you about the encounter at the well. There's a lot of life-changing things that takes place when we come into the presence of a God that pursues us. Now, for one statement, I pray that you hear everything that God has me to say this morning for the glory of Him, not for the glory of me. But I want you to remember this one statement. Christ did not go to the well for water. He went to the well for the woman. So in your life today, if you feel like no one is pursuing you because someone else has spoken over you, and, and, and how many of us have went through, I, I said us, that we've went through and allowed someone to attach something to us. You know, they wrote it out on a post-it note and they stuck it on our back and, and people laugh behind us because of what that stigmatism is. I listened to a young man talk about, well, you don't know what I endured growing up. And all I wanted to say is, well, boy, <laughs> you don't know what I endured. You know, we can face what we have in our life, either with the joy of the Lord being our strength, or we can go through life allowing everything that will defeat us to be how we maneuver through our life in this world that we live. See, we have hope. See, the song we just sung at the end was truly a declaration. There's not one of us here today that can say that God has ever failed us. Ever. Now, we didn't get the results that we wanted. But God knew better. I'm so thankful that God has his hand upon our lives in such a way that when we are not correct in front of him, he loves us enough to correct us, bring us to a place of understanding. And I pray this morning that this opens up your eyes to the fact that God will meet you and in this situation will wait till you show up. He will wait till you get there. See, some of us in this building today, we have never stopped searching and seeking the face of God. No matter if we're in a desperate situation or if we are filled with the joy of the Lord, if we have the joy of who He is dwelling within our life, there's still a time in my life I don't want to give up. None of us has ever arrived. But there's something about walking hand in hand with Jesus Christ himself on this path of life. He guides us and he directs us and he encourages us. You know, there's a lot of things fascinating in this world. I think of some of the great wonders of, of the world. Anybody ever saw the pyramids in Egypt? I flew over them one time going into Alexandria to do a job. Any of you ever walked the Great Wall of China? Well, I walked about a quarter mile, and it was straight uphill, and I was done before I ever got to the peak. <laughs> but I saw it. The Great Wall of China can be seen from outer space. We've seen the all the things that human hands have done and things that have built many times without understanding. But if there's something about 
that well of living water that springs up within our soul. Man didn't create it. God truly, with his own hands, dug it out. We have the ability to come into the presence of Jesus Christ. And that water that I talk of this morning is, is about it's the living water of who Christ is. Scripture says it will flow out of our bellies, will be springs of living water. There's a certain place down in Missouri that I have visited where they literally carry up containers up the side to a natural spring, up out of the river, and they walk up the side, and the natural spring just flows. And they stand there, and they fill milk jugs. And some even take coolers up and let it be filled and close it and carry it back and put it into their canoes. There's only one way to get to it. You have to go through the water. There's something about hungering and desiring a thirst the course based upon scripture as the deer panteth for the water so my soul longeth after thee see when we find that the presence of God and the taste of who he is things start to change within our lives and if you haven't experienced that change or you went through and you've tasted and you've walked away from God or you turn your back on God or you're struggling because you're not getting everything you want in the time that you want it. Just think about the taste of that clear, pure, living water. It's the only thing I know that satisfies the soul. Remember some of the days that we experienced just in the last month, how hot and draining it was? There was nothing you could drink that would consume the thirst that you had other than water. And in a soul-dry, thirsty land of the world that we're living in right now, the soul within us that becomes dry and thirsty, the only thing that will ever bring us to a place of satisfaction is consuming the living water that flows so freely. Back many years ago, and, and it's not about me, I was sharing with, with Rennie a little bit in one of our meetings this morning about, I used to write songs. And there was a song that I wrote, and it was about the living water, and it flows freely from heaven above. And it flows today still for who we are, for you and me. There's a time in our lives that, that, there's, that we're searching and we're, and we're completely going past. And all we need to do is allow God to stop us in the pursuit of earthly things. Because that Samaritan woman, she came in the middle of the day. And I'm going to read scripture in just a moment. She come around the noon hour because... None of the other women of the community would show up at the well. This woman was an outcast. No one spoke to her. No one wanted anything to do with her. So she would come in the heat of the day when no one else was around. But that day, the Lord and Savior of her life sat waiting for her. Now think about that and apply it to your life. All God wants you to do is to look up and see that he is waiting for you to get to him. It's kind of a sobering thought, isn't it? See, this water that I'm talking about, it's not confined to one earthly spot. It can be found anywhere where a believer will share the gospel with you. It's not confined to a certain well that was dug for Jacob's sake. This living water walks the streets of Fond du Lac through the streets of Madison and Milwaukee. This water walks 
through the desert places in people's lives, and all we have to do is to share it. See, every one of you that are believer here today, you carry the water of who God is within you, and there's always enough to share for the next one. Think about what God wants to do in you, through you, not for you, but for Him. This morning, Jason asked me, he says, Pastor, what can I do for you? I said, I need water at the front. Everything in me wants me not to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. (sighs) See, what I have, I can freely give. You got to get your own cup. You ain't putting your lips on my bottle. (laughs) You get up here and just kneel over and just open it up and some of you live that life you know what I'm talking about but the living water that God has is never bottled up the living water that God has for you is not constrained in the limitations of what we put it in Come on, right there, I can, I can take up another offering because that's, that's preaching right there. The living water that I'm talking about cannot be contained by some man's apparatus. It flows freely and it flows continually and it's pure. And there's something about it that refreshes the mind and the heart and especially the soul. Pull up John chapter 4. Verse 7, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink for me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Verse 13, Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting Life, verse 15. The woman said, Sir, give me this water, that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. See, this morning we have to ask God. We have to ask God to intervene in our lives. God, give us what we need. There's some of us that are going through life, and I say us, There's times in my life I have to back up because as a pastor, I'm expected to do this and I'm expected to do that. And I have to know, forgive me for saying, I have to know my craft. Why? Because I have many individuals counting on me to lead the way. And as I said this morning, you can be confident in following me because I follow Christ. I don't lead you on a path of destruction. I, my goal is to lead you to a place that you can apply these promises to your life that we work through and we have the ability to hold on to the gifting 
that God has given us through his promises within the word. We have these promises that we can put upon our lives and upon our hearts that we can not just simply walk in it, but we can share it and we can give it away. And this is one thing. And church, you can give everything of God you have away and you still have more than enough. Amen? Amen. Again, remember that Jesus didn't come for the water. He came for the woman. See, this well that I'm talking about is never going to be replaced because it never grows old. This well, it'll never be repaired because it has never been broken. It has never been polished because it has never lost all of its glimmer and shine. It has never been forgotten because there's always someone finding it for the very first time. So what can we learn? How can we find this understanding of how important this well and this statement is within the Word of God? See, this word, this statement reaches down and it touch the rejected. Christ told His disciples, He says, I must go to Samaria. I must go there. And they were questioning why. See, it wasn't about the geographical place. It was that he had an official appointment within himself. There was going to be an encounter take place. Now, some of you, and you can follow me if you can, Mr. Brandon. I'm so thankful for that Crow's Nest crew. Uh, Just take a moment and and just give them appreciation. (laughs) But there's a reason. Why, for some of you, you're even here today. Because there was an appointment for you to hear the word of God about your situation. This woman came and there was a desperation. And and, and what had happened is that she was rejected by everyone else. But Christ says, no, there's a purpose in you. And for some of you, as you have traveled down through life and you've made poor choices, bad mistakes... Instead of going left, you went right in your mind, but God wanted you to go left, but you wasn't right in your thinking. Did that confuse any of you? But Christ knew. He could have walked on into the city, but he waited for the encounter to take place. So here she was, a woman of rejection, a woman that had a reputation It just wasn't because he was weary and tired from the journey, but he sat at Jacob's well knowing at noon that lonely, discouraged, rejected individual would show up. And so he waited. See, some of you feel that you've been rejected by society. And I tell you this morning, that's not a bad thing. Because our society has just went totally crazy. Some of you feel rejected by your family because you're serving God and they're not. And and it's a difficult situation. Christ knew that as he spoke to her, it would open up a door of conversation that he could reach her heart and make amends within it to reunite her with a God that she literally worshipped. See, what many people see in our lives is we see the objection of our life. What Christ saw was an opportunity to witness. What others saw in her was perversion because she already had five husbands living with another man that wasn't her husband. But what Christ saw was a woman that could become pure because of who he was. Others saw her as nothing more than an adulteress. But what Christ saw, that she was going to speak with the authority of angels. 
see, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, it doesn't even matter how many times you've come back and gave yourself back to God. See, we serve a God of the second, third, and the fourth, the 500th. See, as long as we're searching, we mess up. And even if we rebel, there's a rebellion that takes place. But when we turn our heart back to God, God is there and that living waters flow. It washes us again, pure as snow, the blood of Christ. So you have to remember that, that as his side was pierced upon the cross, it was blood and water that ran forth. The purification of water is a sign of who we are in Him. See, this morning, church, I don't know what you're going through, but I can tell you, you do not have to go it alone. You don't. One thing that, that I need to remind all of us, Christ rejects no one. No one. No matter how detrimental their life is, how perverted their thinking is, no matter what they've done in their past, Christ rejects no one. The only thing that keeps you out of the presence of God is your rejection of Him. Someone asked me, Pastor, what, what is that one? What is that one sin that they refer to? It's a rejection of the Holy Spirit's leading in our life. The thing that keeps you out of the presence of God is your unwillingness to accept the presence of God. I'm going to do it my way. It's my highway that we're traveling. It's not what God wants. It's what I want. And so we rebuke what God has for us and we refuse to allow it to be applied to our lives and we refuse to be compliant with that rebellion spirit. Again, I remind you of, I have often before, there's three things, the very three things that Satan himself, Lucifer fell from heaven, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eye. Because it's all about what I want in those three sins. And one of the other reasons that I love this story is that the water discerned the destitute. Those that have nothing. See, Jesus instructed the woman to go and to bring her husband to him. Go into John chapter 4 and read all this story. But he told her, go get your husband. And all of a sudden she was relieved that, that he already knew. There was a discernment in who Christ was. He said, well, I know you've already had five husbands. And the, and the dude you're living with now you're not married to. But let me share with you, and the water of this well is revealing. See, once you taste the water, the living water of Christ, accepting Him as Lord and Savior. I'm trying to make this as plain as I can to you this morning. When you accept Jesus Christ and the water of His love flows over you, the blood of, of salvation is applied to our lives. Once that happens, you can't hide your secret sins. They will eat you up. And what happens is that Christ spoke to her and he, and he said, well, you know, let me be a southern, hey, sweetheart, I know you've been shacked up for quite a while now. Don't hide it. See, when you come to me, you can hide your sins. Maybe. God does a lot of revealing. But I don't judge. That's held to one individual, and that's God himself. He is the judge. All my job is is to catch you, get you into the boat. He'll do the filleting. He'll take care of it, okay? Isn't that what correction feels like some days? If somebody has put a knife to you and just cut you from mouth to... Well, we won't go there. See, the presence of God brings us to a place that we start confessing and then we start repenting. Isaiah says, I am a man of unclean lips. David said, forgive me of my secret faults. 
See, there's a discerning quality about this water that brings us face to face with a holy God. See, for you and I, we have to step away from the world's thoughts and get into the presence of God because in the presence of God, we're reminded that we're to be holy like He is holy. We have to be reminded that we have to die to ourself, die to the lust of the eye, die to the lust of the flesh, die to the pride of life, Paul wrote, take up your cross. you got to find yourself. Christ said, you've got to take up your cross. So in our lives, one of the things that is so important is this, this water that I talk about this morning cleanses the corrupt. Now let me remind you once again, Jesus didn't show up for the water. He showed up for who? The woman. And if he shows up in the middle of the heat on a hot, dusty day, waiting patiently, don't you know that he's going to wait for you? Amen. Well, Pastor, I've messed up recently. Praise God, the water still flows. The blood of Christ still runs down the cross that we will have salvation She asked, give me this water. There are several verses from the time Jesus requested water from her to the time that he announced to her that he was the Messiah. Just a few verses in between the asking And the deliverance. Now let me give you a timeline. That only took minutes. It only took minutes. For some of us, we've been waiting for God to intervene in our children's life and the people that we pray for. 18 years or so. But God showed up. And, and this thing about the water that, that literally cleanses the corrupt, it's so amazing. See, there's no soul that is so lost that Jesus can't find it. There's no strength so weak that Jesus can't strengthen it. There is no occasion so insignificant that Jesus cannot elevate it for His glory. This woman made the trip every day at noon. Who's playing the piano this morning? Yeah, some do. I know you're taking notes. I'm sorry. Somebody take notes for her. Every day she came. At noon. Jesus knows your habits. He knows what you go through every day. Now let me be a counselor for just a moment. Stop thinking about anything else and just hear these words. Some of you know what your triggers are. For sin to come in your life. I've sat in my office. I've sat in the room. And I've counseled too many individuals. You're not ignorant. Of what your triggers are. One individual that is. Dealing with pornography. what your triggers are. See, there's sin in our life that we have to see as true sin. 
not just part of who we are. Some of that is just bogus statements. I counseled a young couple. In the very first church we ever pastored, and they were both sexual addicts. This was back in 1997. The young man would tap out his credit cards on 900 numbers. Sexual conversations. The young woman would move from one exterior lover to another. As shocking as it sounds, she showed up one day at church. Praise team on the platform. My office was in the back of the church in the sanctuary. She stepped into my office, closed the door. She opened up her London fog. And all she had on was a pair of red pumps. I immediately stood up, walked out, and I looked at those at the platform I called one by name I said did you see her walk into my office yeah did you see me immediately walk out yes sir I said there will be a meeting I walked over to the son-in-law of the man that started the church old Norman was nearly 80 years old then I said walk her off the property tell her if she comes back I'm going to have her arrested I did that and ever since that day I have kept my gate locked and my fence painted another southernism so you have to choose to separate yourself from sin in someone else's life. You have to choose to say, I don't want to be a part of this. And then you finalize it with, I am not going to be a part of this. See, the water that I'm talking about this morning still flows freely that you and I can go through life knowing that we can take another cool, clear drink of Him. I want to ask you to stand. Just a moment, I'm going to open up these altars. These altars, again, is not just for repentance. This is a place of worship. This is a place of remembrance. But the water that Christ gives, that water announces the answers in our lives. Christ literally stands and proclaims that we have hope in Him. That we have the ability when we feel down and out (laughs) to get up and in to who he is. And it's amazing. There is no end. There is no end. See, even the presence of God, if we go from this place on earth to the heavenly places that He has prepared for us, we will still be able to drink of the refreshing water of who Christ is. We get to stand in His presence and we get to worship Him and we get to glorify Him. And right now, as you're going through your life, Jesus is still sitting at the edge of the well at the right hand of the Father. Because that is where the water flows from the throne room of God Himself 
coming down into our lives. And this morning, we close for you. There is no restriction. What took place in this woman? When she came into the presence of a Christ, a Savior, she went from being rejected to becoming the hero of the town. She walked in and says, you got to come and see the man that's told me everything about my life. And he is giving me water that I'll never thirst again. He has changed me. Now think about it. You're sitting here. You're standing here. We're here on this platform together. It's through the power and the anointing of the living water of who Christ is. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost flowing freely. See, instead of going back into the community that she came out of, she didn't walk back with her head hung down and two buckets of water that she would have to replenish tomorrow. She walked back into the community with her head high, with her voice proclaiming that Jesus Christ is alive and well. This morning, I want to proclaim to you that Jesus Christ is alive and well. No matter what's going on. The answer can be found in your pew, but I'd encourage you to step out. If I can have a singer up here on the platform, that would be wonderful. But let us worship. Let us give God glory. If you're going through a hard time, this is one of the place for your answer. Amen? So before you come, let us pray. Heavenly Father, this morning, I ask that you just reach down and you touch each soul that's here. God, there's some that this week has been Well, Lord, this week's been tainted with disappointment, discouragement. This week, there are some standing here, sitting here, Lord, that is just, well, God, they've been fighting things that they didn't even know where they were coming from. God, for those that need to repent, of the sin of their life, Lord, these altars are open, Lord, and I pray that you draw people. For those that re need to rededicate their life, Lord, I ask that you would draw them. And God, for those that just some simply worship you for all that you've already done. And God, for them to be reminded that their future is held by you in every case. God, we ask it in your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God's leading you as they start to sing. I ask that you come. If you need to leave, I ask that you leave respectfully, keeping the doors closed, and have your conversations on the other side. I'm going to ask my wife to come up here. We are still facing the needs within some of our family. But they need to taste of the water that freely flows. Amen. So if you need to go, want to go, go in God's blessings. If you want to pray, come and pray. If you want to come and pray for someone, come and pray. I, I need prayer warriors up here. Amen. Pastor John, I want you to come up with me.
You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and great are you. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. 
praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, Lord. Great are you, Lord. that are praying, continue to pray. For those here in the sanctuary, I encourage you to pray for one another. Not moving from where you're at, but just making acknowledgement within your spirit. If you don't know someone and God's laying them upon your heart, go to them, introduce yourself. For the men in the house, look around and see individuals that just need to touch from God. I'm thankful for you that we are who God called us to be. Have a wonderful rest of your, your day, your week. I'll see you on Wednesday nights. If you're not coming on Wednesday nights, Shame on you. You're missing a great opportunity. Amen? But you're loved. We used to sign out on everything I wrote out with initials. God loves you and so do I. G-L-Y-S-E-I. God loves you and so do I. God bless you all. Continue to pray if you will. <laughs>